Iowa Catholic Radio presents the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines. Father Joseph Pins, Pastor. Father John Broby, Associate Pastor. We offer this Mass for all the students of our parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raised us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and at peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at right under the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer, and a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple, called the Beautiful Gate, every day, to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. <clears throat> Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him. Sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You, descendants of Abraham, his servants, son of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations. 
which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those who with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on further. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that, while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scripture to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two reaccounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good, and all the time. Today we reflect on this text from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. The greatest and the sure evidence of the resurrection is not the empty tomb. It is the transformation of lives. If you want to be a good witness of the resurrection, it is not about the empty tomb. When it comes to the empty tomb, people can make arguments. But when my life changes, when your life changes, when people begin to see you living the life of resurrection, there is no argument. No one can argue. I used to be a drunkard 
because of the resurrection, I don't drink anymore. I used to be a womanizer. Because of the resurrection, I don't go after women anymore. I used to be a gambler, but because of the resurrection, I don't gamble anymore. I used to do drugs, but because of the resurrection, I don't do drugs anymore. I used to gossip. But because of the resurrection, I don't do that anymore. I used to hate. But because of the resurrection, it is all about love. I used to be somebody who was greedy. But because of the resurrection, I am not so, so selfless. I used to be selfish. But because of the resurrection, I let go of everything. Who can argue against this? Is there anybody who can argue? I used to be afraid. But because of the resurrection, I fear nothing. I can face tomorrow. I can face all my fears. I used to be a coward. Like Peter, on the night of the betrayal, a little girl came and said, I know you. You are the friend of this guy. And I said, no, I don't know him. And I even swore. But after the resurrection, I am out there declaring, silver and gold, I have none. What I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus, the Nazarene, rise up and walk. Who can argue? Who can argue? My dearly beloved, we can, we can witness, we can talk all we want. If we don't begin to walk our talk, we cannot be true witnesses of the resurrection. The resurrection power must change our lives. Like these two guys going to a mouse. And it was evening. When they encountered the Lord, we are told at once they set out and went back to Jerusalem. That is the resurrection power. That is Jesus risen. Yes, the empty tomb is there. But you must experience the resurrection power in your life. You must have a story. They had a story to tell. We have seen him. They had a story. Were our hearts not burning when we listened to him? You cannot listen to Jesus and not have your heart burned. What is your experience and what is your story? It is not just about the empty tomb. It is also about me. I have my story. Do you have your story? You cannot be a Christian and not have a personal story. They came back and they told their story. Peter is going to tell his story in the Acts of the Apostles. All the disciples will tell their stories. What is your story? You cannot encounter the resurrected Christ and not see a change in your life. Shall we rise in prayer? For the church, may God grant her wisdom and fortitude in helping all people come to know Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may God grant them the courage to work tirelessly to defend the dignity and sanctity of human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering in any way, may God make his abiding presence known to them as they endure their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this assembly, may God help us turn our prayers here to in, into action in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, may they, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. And for all those prayers and intentions that are in the depths of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. We ask our Mother Mary to continue to intercede on our behalf as we pray. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace. The, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We make all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of our creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of our creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in our salvation of mind and body, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is a true lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and given thanks, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more given thanks. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be guided into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of churches, Grand Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, especially for all students of this parish for whom we offer this Mass. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, the peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Jesus who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. You've been listening to the Daily Mass from St. Francis of Assisi Catholic Church in West Des Moines on the Iowa Catholic Radio Network. 